Today we're going to be looking at some awful, awful people. Get ready with me while I tell you about my toxic friend that I cut off after 21 years. 21 right, years? So my friend, let's call her Olivia. Thank you, One Direction. I've known her since kindergarten and everything was fine until we got to high school. She started to get a reputation of being the boy stalker of the entire school. She would somehow find guys numbers and she would message them, never getting the hint that they weren't interested and people just weren't too keen on her because they were afraid of her. When it came to boys, there was no boundaries. She actually messaged my sister's boyfriend after she went with me to visit my grandpa while he was in hospice. My sister's boyfriend was with her. She met him for probably one second, didn't even say anything, messaged him on Facebook that night and basically said, hi, I'm Olivia, we met at the hospital. Ooh. I'm signing in his DMs right now. Not only that, but there was actually a guy that I was talking to Guess whose DMs that she slid in? Um, he ended up sending me the text messages of proof saying like, is this your friend? She was hitting on the guy that I was talking to. This is supposed to be my best friend, mind you. We got in a fight, things were fine. I always ended up taking her back because I'm too much of an empath and I was just like, okay, you made a mistake. She didn't though, because we ended up going to college together and this is where things get really bad. There were these two guys, I thought one was cute, she thought the other one was cute. Um, her guy was also really, interesting he would uh keep girls underwear and put them on his fan in his room so that's the kind of guy that she was going after i don't even think i ever spoke to my guy i just thought he was like cute but this is where it gets bad so we were in like the common room one day and her guy is passing and me and her are playing pool he comes in and he's trying to be like all flirtatious and says like oh like can i play pool with you guys she walks away she goes to sit down on the couch and then she's looking at me like angrily like and I'm like, what are you doing? This is your moment to shine. The idiotic guy goes, oh, winner gets a kiss. So I'm like, oh my God, Olivia, what are you playing? Like this was the perfect setup. The guy just, he didn't even care. He just wanted anybody. So I was like, listen, he's ready to go. Okay, you really want him, let's do this. She's just staring at me. So I'm like, okay, this is great. I did not entertain his conversation whatsoever. I ended up leaving with her and I'm like, we're not doing this. As we're leaving, the guy that I think is cute is passing and he looks in and he just waves. That was it. Nothing else, a wave. She's still mad. So I'm like, but why? what happened here? She ends up sending me a really long paragraph that night about how she's upset that her guy said the kiss thing when I literally was trying to be her wing woman. And then she was mad that the guy I thought was cute waved at me. So this is just the beginning. Get ready for part two. Okay, so there are two more parts that we're gonna watch. However, we're gonna have a look for the comments. And it sounds about your friend's definitely a bit of an interesting one. You know, I was thinking that at some point her actions would make sense, but they don't at all. That's what I'm thinking. It's like, oh, it's a bit weird. And then apparently she was talking to a guy who puts like women's panties in his fan. What's going on there? I'm a firm believer, and if it doesn't matter how long you've been friends with a person, if they're not a good friend, you just end the friendship. Exactly. And sometimes it can be very, very hard. Hence why people stay in toxic relationships and friendships. If you've known somebody for a long time and you've been with them and you truly love them. Sometimes it's hard to let go of them. And if a friend is acting like her friend, you need to drop them immediately. Welcome to part two. So this entire book, I shouldn't even call it a paragraph. This book is her describing how she's upset because she thinks I'm pretty. She's describing how she's upset that the guy I think is cute waved at me. And I said, why would that make you upset? Like you should be happy for me because that's the only interaction I've had with this man. She did not care. I can understand feeling like insecure, but I didn't do anything wrong, but she was directing her anger at me. Is she maybe jealous? So that was that. Let's fast forward. And I actually started talking to a guy at college. And this was like, actually like we weren't dating, but we were seeing each other. This is where it gets really, really weird. Okay. Things are going well with this guy. He's literally sleeping over. She literally has the audacity to text me one day and go, Hey, so I think me, you and blank should go on a vacation together. Maybe we can share him. She did not mean like all of us having a party together and which I would also not be okay with. She literally to the T wrote, I can have him one night, you can have him the other. No. A guy that I'm actually like talking to. Ew. Tell me how that makes sense. Tell me how you have the audacity to bring that up. So she wants I to share him. I kind of let that slide him. because again, I always took her back after a fight. I don't know why. I think it's because I felt sorry that she didn't really have any other friends and I've known her for so long. So I'm like, oh, it's just like something that she does. I, I ended up why leaving the college the like a few months later. I just wanted to do different things. And thankfully I did because during this time is when I met my now husband. 
she did not like this. She did not like that A, I had somebody who liked me, and she also didn't like that B, I left the school. She ended up leaving the school shortly after as well, and she kind of refused to ever meet my now husband. She did meet him once, we all went to get bagels, but like any time he was visiting from England, I'd be like, oh, like, I really want you to see Sam, and she'd be like, no. And I was like, okay, that's kind Is of she strange. maybe jealous? Over this time, she was having a few different boyfriends, and she cheated on every single one of them, sometimes with their best friends. So this is when I started pushing away, because I'm like, I don't want to be friends with someone who has no remorse for something like that. We decided to go on a little girl's getaway upstate, and she is at the supermarket with me, and she goes, what should we cook them for dinner tonight? I go, who? Like, we're in the middle of nowhere. Who are we cooking dinner for? Go to part two, I'm so sorry. Okay, so we're about to watch part three, but by the sounds of it, that girl might actually be in love with you. Like, I've got a feeling she's jealous that you've got a boyfriend. Girl, she was in love with you, exactly, because in part one, you know how she was mentioning how the friend wanted to share her, like, boyfriend or the guy she was talking to. I don't think she actually wanted to share him. I think she just wanted a bit of you. Like, I think she's got a thing for you. Girl, she may be obsessed with you, like, get a restraining order. I don't think she might be obsessed with you. I think she is obsessed with you. Like, to me, this is very psychotic. This is like a snowball effect. Like, she started the spiral. And usually whenever someone spirals to the very bottom they end up killing somebody well anyways let's watch part three welcome to part three this girl has the audacity to say that these two guys are coming over one for me one for her i'm dating sam at the time okay oh. i think we were together maybe like two years at this point i'm like are you actually kidding me she had these two guys come over and i said to her if you leave me alone with one of these men i will never talk to you again thankfully she did not but I was not happy. I was texting Sam the whole time like, I have to get out of here. Also, side note, the guy that she was like bringing over, she cheated with her other boyfriend with this guy at one point, but she said it was one pump, so it didn't count as cheating. Now, the next part is probably the worst thing that she has ever done, and I don't know how I took her back after this. This should have been the last straw. But one of my friends passed away, and the day after she passed away, Olivia was gossiping about it to everybody. Oh, she God, messaged me, ew. and she messaged my other friend, and she was like, hey, did you hear this is how she died? It wasn't even correct. Like, it wasn't even the way that she died, and she was just gossiping about it. So I said, yes, I understand that she passed. She was a close friend of mine, and I'd rather not talk about that. And she goes, oh, sorry, didn't know you guys were best friends. That was her reply to me saying that I was upset. Keep in mind, throughout our entire friendship, she never once was there for me. Like, anytime I needed her, she wasn't there. But every time she needed me, I dropped everything like that. Everyone around me, my friends and family, were always like, why are you still friends with her? She treats you like garbage, and I just couldn't see it. But after my friend passed, and she was just making it a gossip thing, and then not even showing her support or anything, that's when I was like, all right, you're disgusting. <laughs> Anytime I would call her out on something, she would end up blocking me on legitimately every single platform. I don't know why, it was almost like I did something wrong. So she would block me and then whenever she decided like, oh, okay, I'm gonna message her now, she would just message me like nothing happened. She would literally message like, hey, how are you? Not an apology, not anything. That's After just the whole so friend immature. thing happened, I ended up taking her back again. It sounds like we're in a relationship. I ended up taking her back and this is when it was like around the time of my wedding. So we were talking about my wedding. I was so excited. I obviously sent her the bridal shower invitation, the wedding invitation. She did not come to either one. My best friend did not come to our wedding. She didn't even send a congratulations card. She didn't even say congratulations. She also did say she was gonna come to the bridal shower and she just didn't come. Her parents are also just as bad because they've known me since I was five years old and they couldn't even say congrats. So I was just like, this whole family is so toxic. And to this day, she has still been messaging me. And guess what, guys? I have not answered. So I'm finally done. Get rid of the toxic people in your life. Okay, so there's actually another video after this where she shows us some of the messages. However, that's just so weird, isn't it? Why is she like that? Like, I feel like she's got a hate-love relationship where she loves you, but she also hates you and hates seeing you with other people because she can't have you. And then also, I think it's good that she didn't go to your wedding because imagine if she went to your wedding. Whenever they were getting married, she'd probably protest and be like, yeah, I don't want them to get married. I'm telling you guys, there's some weird people out there. It was just one pump I wasn't cheating. I also hate the way she said that. Like, it was just one pump. So we actually finished inside of you. The hardest part, she truly won't believe her except that she treated you badly. You will never get that apology from her and that hurt's been there. I feel like the friend probably knows that what she's doing is not normal and that she is in the wrong, but she'll never admit to that because then it means she has to realize that, you know, she isn't as perfect as what she thinks she is. She quite clearly knows her behavior is not normal, but she's never gonna admit that. All right, guys, so I found the super old screenshots of our text. I just had to blur out the names. Also, her name was Harry Styles in my phone. Why? Because I love Harry and I was Niall Horn in her phone. That was a whole thing.
Here we go with her text. Why does blank see you and look at you and wave to you and smile at you and acknowledge you? Oh, wait, and blank now. Oh, and blank was staring at you. The way I was at 18 years old, like I was doing everything I can to make sure that like she felt good, even though she was oh, literally like there. psychotic. But I was way too nice looking back at these now. Yes, I should have just been like, girl, shut up. <laughs> So my reply to that was, what am I supposed to do about it? I'm not even wearing makeup. Maybe they were staring because I'm ugly. I know how cringy that is, okay? I was trying so hard to make her feel better. She goes, yeah, death, because that's it, question mark. Ew. I said, you never know. I don't see why you're annoyed at me. I didn't do anything. The most dramatic part. Whatever, dot, dot, dot. I just, dot, dot, dot. I always feel like you're better. You're better than me with everything. You hang with famous guys. You get so many chances with so many people. Continued. You get so many chances with so many people like meeting blank and blank and blank and blank. You have a career set. You're doing great in school. You're gorgeous. You're always going to be prettier than me. Always. I don't care what you say. This next part. Don't deny it. It's just going to make me more mad and upset. Guys choose you all the time. Blank and you get along. Blank, 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 blank. Now blank. Now blank. Oh, wait. Don't forget blank. They always will effing pick you to talk to, you to hang out with. You're prettier. That's effing why and I can't take it anymore. You're number one always and I'm number two always. To clarify like the famous guys part, she's meaning like social media people. I was on a social media tour, which I invited her to come with me on, but she always said no. This whole section, guys choose you all the time here and the names, those were kids in my class. Guys with girlfriends who were in my class. Like no flirtatious things or whatever, just people that were in my class. She couldn't stand that guys like considered me a friend and not her, even though she wasn't even in those classes. This one was cropped for some reason and I don't have the original, so this is what we got. I don't hang with famous guys. I invited you to come with me when I hang out with those guys. Blank, blank, blank. They're my friends. Am I not allowed to have guy friends? And blank. I know for a fact I'm not prettier. They're just friends. You're gorgeous and it makes me upset that you can't see that. Again, I'm trying so hard to make her feel better about herself because I know how insecure she was feeling. She goes, it makes me upset that blank effing picked you. Blank would pick you any day. How can't you effing see that? Like, what does this pick me? Like, what are they picking me for? Probably she goes on to say, psychotic. I'm just annoyed that you're always first. Guys always like you better. I felt horrible just sitting there. He wanted to play with you. Why can't you see that? Blank waved to you and said, hey, again, blank is the guy that I have a crush on. The guy wanted to play pool with both of us and she walked away. I said, I don't know what you want me to do. This was a few days before a social media party that I invited her to. So this was her next reply. Forget it. I don't even want to go tomorrow. Why am I going? I don't know the people. It's going to be so awkward for me. You're going to have fun because you'll look gorgeous. You'll have people who you actually know. And now you want to sleep over at the girl's house. I don't know her. Again, the person that invited us to the party. I say, you're seriously not going to go. She said, I don't know what I want to do. So yeah, a little trip down memory lane. She is actually psychotic. So that was great. Yeah, so I don't think she had a crush on you. I think she just hated you and was jealous of you. That's just so weird. Oh, it's the fact that she would act like that. Like you would never expect your friend to act like that. That kind of reminds me of like controlling relationships. It's basically a controlling friendship. Like she's a narcissist. If you don't do exactly what she does, she's an issue with it. Thank God you got rid of her. She was in love with you. It's very clear. But was she boo? Was she in love with her? Because if you love somebody, you don't treat them the way that she was treating her. Why did she text like a girl in middle school? most likely because that's what her maturity is. You know, people like that, they never ever mature. It's like Karen. It's like a 15 year old girl in the body of like a 47 year old woman. Had a friend like this and it's so draining. Constantly putting yourself down for someone else never again. And that right there is why you need to keep an eye open whenever it comes to friendships. You know, if you get weird vibes off somebody, drop them immediately. Trust your gut because nine times out of 10, your gut never lies. I'm an a-hole for suggesting my wife lowers her standards so that she'll be less overwhelmed. My wife, 37 and I, 38, have three kids, 12, 10 and eight. She is in the constant state of overwhelmed and very easily irritated, constantly complaining about how it's too much. I'm of course happy to help and do my fair share for the kids or household, but it's never enough because her standards are too damn high. She insists that one of us have to be up at 6.45 every morning to make sure the kids are ready and make the bus which comes at 7.45. I told her they're old enough to not need that much help already. They can all dress themselves and pour themselves cereal and milk. There's no good reason we have to be up. She says that cereal isn't a good enough breakfast. They need something more substantial, especially the 12 year old, and that the 10 year old has ADHD and will definitely struggle without help in the morning. And anyway, she wants to see them off and kiss them goodbye for today. So she gets up and I don't. Then she gets upset that I never give her a morning off when all she needs to do is just take the morning off when she wants and let the kid handle themselves. Okay, but these are kids who are 10 and 12. You know, what kid is really gonna handle themselves at that age? Also, she's super strict about screen time during the week and is exhausted and snappy from arguing about it with the kids and upset I don't support her strict limit of two hours a day. I say as long as homework is done, why not until bed? She says it's not healthy for them. They need to play outside or with games and toys, read some books or just entertain themselves in more ways than one. I agree that they should enjoy other things 
experience, but not seeing why we have to make this such a rigid limit. She also likes to get out on the weekends and do stuff like zoos, museums, etc. Then complains about the planning for the outing and how grouchy the youngest gets by the end of it. And again, I say, let's just chill at home with Viola. You've cut the work. I'm an engaged and active parent. I'm not trying to get out of it, but I don't think I should have to help my wife take herself out of her own self-created hole. She creates the stress for herself and then she turns to me to alleviate it, which I think is unfair. I'm an a-hole for telling her she needs to do less and she won't need this level of help. I mean, yeah, by the sounds of it, your wife just wants a tiny bit of help raising the kids. You know, if you are a father, it aids a 50-50 job. So I would say you are a bit of an a-hole. You're the a-hole. Your wife's standards are just being a decent parent and you aren't doing your fair share if you aren't helping with these things you consider necessary. An eight-year-old and a 10-year-old with ADHD are not ready to get themselves ready in the morning and you'd know that if you didn't sleep for the morning routine every day. Two hours of screen time a day is a totally reasonable boundary and family time and enriching activities are also important. Maybe those can be cut down slightly but just chill at home all the time isn't the answer either. Stop being lazy and become an actually engaged parent like your wife is. Exactly, by the sounds of it, the wife is doing basically everything and the husband just sits there. You know, if you have a child with somebody, you have to help raise that child. By the sounds of it, it needs to step up. Uber driver stands up to Entitled Rider. I've got a feeling I know what's gonna happen here. It's gonna be a really horrible person just having to go an innocent man. We've been following ways this morning. This doesn't make any sense at all. We're never gonna get there this way. You have a preference as how to get there? First of all, I would have gone down the West Side Highway and across 79th Street, but that's beside the point. As long as you were going down the East Side, there was nothing wrong with Park Avenue, and we've now spent five minutes on 132nd Street in traffic. And Fifth Avenue looks like. Well, um, sorry, I think this is New York. I could never drive through there. Ways is not a substitute for knowing where you're going and how to get there. Sorry, you feel that way. <laughs> I'm not the only one. I'm sure you're not. Well, don't talk anymore, please. Don't tell me what to do. Don't talk to me like that. I I'm your been... customer here, so just shut the hell up. Oh, damn. Get me to my destination as quickly as you possibly can. That's your only That's job right doing, now. But you're in my car. Don't talk to me like that. Understood? Yeah, I understand what Am you're I saying. Clear? Do you understand what I'm saying? I you have understand. one job right now, and that's to get me to my destination as quickly as you possibly can. And if you don't have that attitude, then you shouldn't be driving a service for hire vehicle. Okay? Okay. Take your complaint to Uber. It, it, well, I certainly will. Okay. Just show Uber this video and they'll be on your side, driver. I'm going to be pulling over to the side and asking you to leave, by the way. I don't think you have the right to do that. Oh, he does. I have the right to refuse service. And you seem like here's what's going to happen. A sensitive snowflake. I am a sensitive snowflake. You hurt my feelings. Um, so you I apologize exit for the hurting vehicle. your feelings. It doesn't relieve. You can have a nice day. Find yourself a better driver. There's plenty out there. I'm doing you a favor. No, you're not. You're yourself. Okay. Have a nice day. You too. Excuse me? I wish they didn't blur it in people's faces. Like, I wish we knew who they were. We need to name and shame them. I don't understand why they purposely go out of their way just to be rude and ruin that guy's day. Do you honestly think an Uber driver is going to try and take the longest possible route? No. He would take the shortest one because then it means he can get another customer. I just feel so bad for people who have to do jobs like that because nine times out of ten, the customers are probably lovely. But they have to come across people like him. You thought Asians were smart. Yeah, and I was kidding. I was just Does that sound kidding. kidding to you? Yes, because everyone knows Asians are smart. It's like saying Girl, a lot. Girl, you gotta get her the f*** out of here. Excuse me, I'm not moving. Yeah, you're, you're I, not well, moving. One, you need to wear a mask. It's I a mandate not, now inside of our store. Law. Man, and we man. can refuse business. Then let's call the police. We can I will call, call the police. He'll be in his side. No, I didn't man, do anything you're wrong. Being asked to leave. I did not say wrong. Now you're trespassing. Thank you. So you're being asked to leave? That, so I'd like to wait outside. I'd like to wait outside. And you need to wait outside. You need for to the police. let go wait, and I need to let, call the police. Let, you can wait, call the police. You have a phone. You can call the police. No, I'm oh, not. Ma please let this go. Excuse me. Ma'am, please let this go. You are. I'm asking you nicely. No, I'm not doing anything. Ma'am, please let this go. Nope. Ma'am, please let this go. Please unhand me. Please let go. You're assaulting me. I'm not assaulting you. Yes, you are. I'm not. Yes, you are. Ma'am, please let this go. Can you let this go? I'd like you to call the law enforcement. I am. It we seems like you got a medical condition. I would like you to it call law enforcement. It seems like you have a medical condition. Something's going on with you. 
Are I you okay? I have every right to be here. No, ma'am, you're, you're, you're refusing anymore. to leave right now. That's right. You're, I'd you're, like you to call law enforcement. Yeah, I'd like want. you to call law okay. enforcement. I will. Will you let us go? Great. Nope. May you please let us go, ma'am? No, I will not. Ma'am, may you please let us go? I'm not letting you being asked to leave. And I'd like to be accommodated. No. You're not being accommodated. I have every right to be here. Ma'am, may you please let us go? Please call the police. Ma'am, please let us go. Please call the police. Please. You, you can smile. You can draw. You're not wearing no, a mask. Call the police. They asked you to leave. I'm not leaving until you call the police. Ma'am, please let it go. Nope. I'm going to talk to law enforcement. Ma'am, you can, you can talk to them all you want. They're, They're going to be in his side. Please. Call law enforcement. Don't get you at the moment. You're you you trespassing on our property. Yeah. The Safeway property. I'm you sorry. can kick your ass outside and wait. You can we'll call, call the cops right there. Let's go, ma'am. You can call. I'm not ma leaving. I have every right go. to be here. No. Nope. Mm -mm. Why are you, ma'am? Please let go. I'm a San Francisco native. I have this every right to be here. Excuse me. Please this let go of my hand. Please let. You are literally assaulting me. I now I'm going to make a police you. report. I am not assaulting you. Call please. I don't think you You're understand. touching me, and I'm not comfortable with that. Please let go of me. Can you please let go of the property? You're literally assaulting me. Can you let go of the property? You're literally assaulting me. Can you let go of the property? Let go of me. Can you let go of the Hello? Let go of me. Okay, so let me get this straight. That woman went into that store, was asked to leave, then refused to leave, and they tried to remove her, and she claimed that they were assaulting her. And did you also hear the way she was talking to them at the beginning? She was like, oh my god, really? Ugh. I just can't stand that. Like, I can never be a security guard, because I would probably smack someone like that. The hardest part of being a security guard must be restraining yourself when dealing with people who desperately need correction. Yeah, oh god, I could not do that. If someone spoke to me the way she spoke to them, I'd be furious. They're literally assaulting me. Uh, even the way she says that, this this is a perfect example of a person living in their own world and being completely unaware of their place in it. That also reminds me of whenever people argue with each other and someone constantly gets in someone's face and they're like, get out of my face. And it's like, you're the one squaring up to them. How are you gonna come up, get in my face, and then tell me to get out of your face when you're the one in my face? You know, make it make sense. Well, anyways, guys, that's really fat to do there. If you wanna see me look at some more awful people like that, let me know, definitely will. Chris Beggar, subscribe, and see you all tomorrow for another video.